On average, every person produces around one kilogram of solid living wastes daily, including kitchen waste, food and product packaging, and other wastes. According to information from the Bangkok government, around 8,700 tons of waste are collected each day. The average waste density 0.4 tons per cubic meter. The wastes are enough to pile up three meters high over a standard football field. For any country and city, waste treatment is a huge challenge, not only in terms of quantity and volume. but also as the organic elements contained in the wastes can ferment, rot and emit nasty smells and become the breeding ground for rats, mosquitoes and flies. Contaminating sources in the wastes may spread diseases. Heavy metals and other toxics in the wastes will pollute underground water and soil. Meanwhile, with the urban development and expansion, scarcity of land means that it is becoming increasingly hard to maintain the conventional landfill method. As a new waste treatment technology, waste incineration has been through development for around 150 years. At first, it was developed in Europe. With the technology, wastes are input into furnaces for incineration in high temperature. The heat produced from incineration is used to generate power, and the byproducts from the incineration become inert materials. Gas and wastewater can be discharged without hazard of safety or pollution after treatment. Over many years of development, waste incineration technology has matured. Among the many waste treatment technology, the Great Furnace is of the longest history, the most stable operation and the most reliable as incineration equipment for living wastes. Gas and waste water treatment can fully meet the environmental protection requirements. Currently, over 30% of living wastes are treated with incineration in European countries such as Germany, UK and France. Most waste power plants are located in the urban areas to facilitate convenience of waste treatment. In some of the Asian countries of high population density and scarce land such as Singapore, each day the living waste collected by the city government are incinerated in the four waste incineration power plants in the urban area. In Japan, over 80% living wastes are incinerated and used. The Central Waste Incineration Plant is only three kilometers away from the Imperial Palace. And there are seven waste incineration plants in the city center area, within seven kilometers from the palace. Tokyo has 22 waste incineration plants in total, mostly in the urban areas. For instance, the Zuli Waste Incineration Plant with capacity of 1,500 tons daily is next door to a middle school and an old people's home. Yigong Incineration Plant with capacity of 900 tons daily is just across the road from a food processing factory and a residential block. In China, where economy is booming, within a short time of only a decade, number of waste power plants has grown from zero to the current over a hundred and the number is still growing. Urban wastes collected each day are transported to the waste incineration plant by concealed waste vehicles and unloaded into the waste pool for storage after weighing. The waste pool can store waste of 10 to 7 days. This is specially designed building with features of sealing, sea page control and corrosion proof, etc. To ensure that the waste will not pollute soil and water source during storage. When waste enter the waste pool, the water content is normally over 60%. 
After natural piling and mixing with the mixing grab, the water content will reduce to below 55%. In the following three to five days, waste will naturally ferment, dehydrate and produce biogas. At the same time, the water content will further reduce to around 35% which is when the waste can be incinerated in the furnace. The special design of the waste pool facilitates wastewater and seepage liquid isolated from the waste to go into wastewater treatment system for purification treatment. The biogas produced from the pool is high heat gas that will be drawn into the furnace to assist incineration. The waste unloading area and the waste pool are together in a sealed compartment. The odor is continuously pumped out with a ventilator into the furnace for high temperature dissolution and to help waste incineration so that the waste pool compartment is maintained at minor negative pressure and the odor of the waste is not leaked to the external space. Wastes go through the three phases of drying, incineration, and burnout, which take around one to two hours. Wastes of around 35% water content are grabbed with the waste grab into the furnace, in which 850 degrees of temperature can further effectively dry the waste so that the wastewater content reduces to below 20% before being flamed into the incineration phase. Compared to 12 to 16% of humidity of wood products in Southeast Asian cities, wastes of below 20% water content are easily burned so that the wastes are ensured to burn out and hazardous substances are fully dissolved. The great furnace has movable grates and incineration assisting air from the waste pool to help the waste to roll continuously in the furnace and fully burn until burnout. The residual combustibles in the slag produced are much lower than 3% of the total weight of slag, which conforms to the EU standard. This world-advanced incineration technology ensures that the waste furnace operates stably under 850 to 1100 degrees of temperature. Dioxins and other hazardous substances are thoroughly dissolved. Normal plastics produce dioxins and other hazardous substances when heated under 725 degrees. Once the temperature reaches above 725 degrees, the substances are fully dissolved. Wastes are maintained in the high temperatures of 850 to 1100 degrees. And the temperature of the smoke discharge outlet is also higher at 850. Smoke and gas are retained for at least two seconds under this temperature to ensure that dioxins and other hazardous substances are fully dissolved. After incineration, around 10% to 20% residuals are slag, which are inert substances that pose no threat to the environment and can be directly disposed of with landfill or used for general purposes. There have been many applications of slag including brick making or road paving. Singapore uses the slag for sea filling. Waste weight reduces by over 80% after incineration and volume reduced by over 90%. The landfill land and environmental issues with landfill can be greatly reduced. Heat stored in the waste is carried by the high temperature smoke after incineration. The steam recycle system in the waste heat boiler absorbs the heat to generate high temperature and high pressure steams 
to drive the turbine generator to generate power. Smoke from furnace goes through the highly efficient smoke purification device to eliminate residual hazardous substances in the smoke, such as acid substances, heavy metals and dioxins, etc. As waste normally contain sulfur and chloride elements, smoke after incineration may have certain amounts of acid substances. The de-acid tower in the smoke purification system is designed for this purpose. An appropriate proportion of slime slurry is sprayed into the tower to have chemical reaction with the acid substances in the smoke to generate hazard-free salt, water and other ultimate reaction products to fully eliminate the acid hazards in the smoke, thereby preventing the production of acid rain. During the heat transfer between smoke and steamer water, there is small amount of dioxins generated and attached to the ash particles with heavy metals in ionic state. There is spray device in the smoke purification system that continuously sprays active carbon powders into the smoke which can capture and attach the heavy metals in gas and hazardous particles. Dioxins, heavy metals, and other hazardous substances ultimately attach to dust particles of around 100 microns. The fly ash control is the focus of the smoke treatment, which ultimate line is the cloth bag duster, which is of special design and special materials and highly effective to capture heavy metal particles and submicron particles. When smoke goes through the cloth bag of the duster at the speed of breeze of around 2 to 3 meters per second, the cloth bag effectively blocks and captures the particles containing heavy metal, active carbon powders containing dioxin, and other submicron particles. The duster efficiency is over 99.99% and discharge smoke dust density is below 10 milligrams per cubic meter, which almost realize zero smoke emission. Fly ash collected at the bottom of the cloth bag duster will be tested. If the heavy metal or dioxin contained within exceed that specified for environmental protection, the fly ash will be stabilized to ensure that no hazardous substance is leaked before disposal as required for environmental protection. With the smoke treatment process, all acid substances, heavy metals, dioxins, and other hazardous substances will be eliminated to ensure the smoke discharge is in line with environmental protection requirements. Wastewater from the waste pool and wastewater collected through other channels are treated through coagulation unit, anaerobic filter tank, membrane bioreactor, MBR, and ultimately through the reverse osmosis RO treatment. Post-treatment water is all recycled for use in the power plant to wash waste collection vehicles, water the greens and breed ornamental fish. When needed, this water can qualify for drinking water standards. Air monitoring over the operating waste incineration plants find that the plants have not posed any adverse impact on the environment. Based on the environmental protection air monitoring parameters from monitoring stations at the waste incineration plant, 5 kilometers and 2.5 kilometers on wind, 2.5 kilometers and 5 kilometers downwind, data shows that when the plant is in operation, there is no increase of dust, dioxin, or other hazardous substances in the air flowing through the plant, which fully proves that the waste incineration plants are safe and reliable. Waste incineration technology is an all-in-one step waste treatment solution that can effectively eliminate the odor and wastewater and control production and dissemination of hazardous substances in the waste. The final solid, gas and liquid byproducts from the waste incineration 
all meet or surpass the environmental protection criteria. Closing on zero emission and hazard free. Meanwhile, the waste heat utilization can reach over 80% so that resources are effectively used. Greenhouse gas emission is reduced by around six times that from conventional landfill so that emission reduction is achieved. More importantly, wastes are reduced in volume so that large amount of land resources is saved. Waste management process is shortened. Greater potential is created for urban development. Creating values to improve people's living environment.